Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. I'm Mike Catalano. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're pretty excited to be talking about what's going on with the Bills draft and what they can also be doing in rounds two and three and beyond that. So, uh, again, thanks for being with us, and let's get right to it. Now, the Bills make a pick, and it's Dalton Kincaid, a tight end. And I have to tell you this. It's on me, and it's probably on a lot of us. I wasn't as focused on the tight end position at all for the Bills. They have Dawson Knox, and we'll get into that in a minute. And you're thinking about other ways to help Josh Allen if you're thinking about in the offense. And that's why I think we were focused on wide receiver. And it doesn't mean the Bills still can't go wide receiver, but we were focused on that position or maybe even offensive line to help them or maybe even running back, right? And we talk about weapons. And I think this pick is a bit – of a question for Brandon Bean to you, right? We hear all the time about how fans love Brandon Bean, and maybe he's lost some of that by some of the picks and the way this roster has looked, especially over the last 365 days. And I think about this. I think about the line from movies. And these movies were when many of you were young. They're when my kids were young. And it's two of my daughter's favorite movies. Um, and it's a line in the movie. It's the same one in both. One of them is the animated movie Aladdin. Do you trust me? Yes. And then the same line in her all-time favorite, Titanic. Do you trust me? I trust you. Yeah. That's what Brandon Bean is asking you, Bills fans. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Because you got to trust him for this pick. Because you're thinking, wait a minute, many of you are. We have Dawson Knox. Okay, that is true. I don't think he thinks of Dalton Kincaid as Dawson Knox. I think he thinks of him as a weapon in this offense. Is that true? We're going to find out. We talk about 12 personnel and Bean even hinted that it's 11 and a half. I think they think of him more as a wide receiver type player. So, um, look, I'm going by what the people who have studied tape talk about. And one of those guys is Daniel Jeremiah, former member of an NFL front office, worked with the Eagles, been with the NFL Network, outstanding at his job. He's on the Pat McAfee show. This was obviously before the draft, and he was asked about the tight ends, and here's what he had to say. Like Kincaid for me is unbelievable. Who's but that? Kincaid from Utah. I think he's the best tight end in the draft. Better than uh, he's, Mayer. He's just more sudden. He's more explosive than Mayer. Like you can watch. Wow. I don't know if you pull up his. If you pulled up Kincaid's numbers, just look at look at what he did against. I know USC's USC. defense wasn't yeah. good this year, but if you the first game he had against SC, I was watching the targets, guys. I'm sitting there, so you can go through the video and you can sort it and just watch all of his targets for the year. And when you're doing tape on all these guys, it's just one after another after another. And so I'm sitting there going like. I think I just dozed off because I think I've been watching this guy catch passes against USC for the last 30 minutes. Like, did I, and I, I, I literally like pulled up the boxer. I'm like, oh, my gosh, he had like 15, 16 catches in that game. Um, but he's, he's more dynamic. He's going to be – I think he's just better in the pass game. Dynamic in the pass game. I like Dawson Knox. And I think part of what plays into this for a lot of fans is you feel like, okay, we're settled at tight end. We found a guy that can play. And they paid him. And they absolutely did. But we're talking about getting more weapons on the field for Josh Allen. And maybe that means a reduction in snaps uh, for what they do in the tight end position to begin with. Um, Bean referred to him as being more, he didn't say he was Cole Beasley. What he was saying is the way Beasley knew his way around coverages and could get open in the middle of the field. Let me ask you this. Do you think of Dawson Knox as a middle of the field safety blanket for Josh Allen? Because I don't. I think Dawson Knox is a good to really good football player. But he's certainly not anybody's dynamic, right? He's made some nice plays. And I think there's a place for him in this offense. Um, but they've been dying to get a second tight end. And get a second tight end at times on the field, right? And it just hasn't worked out. I mean, look, you could say O.J. Howard. I think they were looking for absolutely a secondary guy to go with Knox. In this case, I think they think Dalton Kincaid is going to be the number one pass catcher at the tight end position, and Dawson Knox is going to have a different role for them. 
And I know not everybody's going to love this pick. And I don't know how well he's going to play. And I think this is why I go back to trusting Brandon Bean and the scouts. They obviously had a first round grade on this kid, like I said, because they traded up and gave up 130 to get to him. Um, we've heard the Cowboys wanted him badly. Look, the Cowboys do a lot of dumb stuff, but they're usually pretty good at finding tight ends and guys that can catch the football. He's been compared to Zach Ertz. You guys know I love Zach Ertz, right? He, he, Dawson Knox is not Zach Ertz, <laughs> okay? And this may scare you a little bit um, because the way Dalton Kincaid has played and they believe he can play is compared to Maybe the most annoying guy in the NFL, but a phenomenal first ballot Hall of Famer in Travis Kelsey. He's not Travis Kelsey, but he plays like that. And you don't think the Bills want to get a guy like that? Look, um, I don't agree with everything Chris Sims says, and I have to apologize to him. Uh, he talked about JSN from Ohio State in Jigby, in Jigbe being available for the Bills at 27. And it started to feel like that could happen. Now he went in the twenties, but that was part of his evaluation. And sometimes we look at the way players are evaluated is different sometimes than the way they're drafted. But I went and looked up what Chris Sims had to say about Dalton Kincaid. Take a listen. This is like a no brainer, right? It's like a Bijan Robinson. It's like a Devin Witherspoon we talked about last week at the corner position, right? I don't give a crap if he does the combine or does a 40 or whatever. It's like Dan Campbell said, you just turn on the film. That's what we want to go with more, not the pajama Olympics. Man, this is this is guy, is, he's a top 10 pick, Mike. That That's how good we're talking here. This is a guy that phenomenal route runner, phenomenal after the catch. He's good in the run game and he can get better. He's aggressive. He's not afraid of contact, right? He, he can block. He can do that, right? It's something he's got a little more potential to grow in. But he has a type of ability like in the passing game and stuff, Mike. It's, it's, it's Travis Kelsey-ish, if that makes sense. The way he runs routes, gets up field. He's actually a bigger, stronger man than Travis Kelsey. He can make people miss and weave through traffic. People bounce off him. He has it all. Right, TJ Hawkinson, who was drafted in the top ten a few years ago, he's better than TJ Hawkinson was coming out. You know, Kyle Pitts, right, the freak of nature at Atlanta right now. I'm not gonna say he's that freak of nature, but he plays the position every bit as good as Kyle Pitts. So this is a guy that Okay. The Bills got that guy. Now look, that doesn't make Chris Sims right. Um he also loves Josh Allen, as we know. But listen to some of those words. Again, when you hear these analysts refer to players, uh, well, Kyle Pitts is one. I mean, he hasn't done anything yet, really, in the league, but we know about his talent. But when you start referencing guys like Travis Kelsey, uh, we're, we're talking about the type of player and the way he's used. Because I know Kansas City has been very, very upset with the way Travis Kelsey blocks. Man, if that guy was just a better blocker, I think they could actually get something out of him. Um, this, you can feel the dripping sarcasm here. Uh, this guy's a pass catcher. They're going to line him up and he's going to go get it. And I think they believe he's a better pass catcher than any of the wide receivers that they were looking at there. And he's a bigger target for Josh Allen. Um, I'm, I'm convinced that this guy can have a massive role with this team. And I'm not worried. I, I'm not worried about where Dawson Knox fits. Dawson Knox, a great teammate, Josh's buddy, all those things. You can't tell me you weren't frustrated at times with the amount of targets and the amount of times Dawson Knox made impacts in the pass game. They need more out of the tight end position, unless you're going to get more at the wide receiver spot and they can still do things. So I go back to trusting Brandon Bean. I, you know, we heard him. He's pretty excited about this pick. I think they're excited in the room. And I love the fact, look, cap it off for me, they got the guy ahead of the Cowboys, which always makes things better. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in on the idea of Kincaid, and I'm in on the type of player that he is because that is missing. That middle of the field is missing for Josh Allen. They just haven't had it.
I mean, listen, they, they brought back they brought back Cole Beasley last year, you know, to try to get him uh, help across the middle. And uh, maybe this opens things up again for Diggs. Maybe it opens things up a little bit more uh, for Gabe Davis on the other side. Gabe goes back to being more of what he is. I'm not sweating the two tight ends. I'm also not sweating 12 personnel. There's a lot of teams that use it effectively. We're not talking about in a power run game here. So I know my buddy Dan Fates hates the pick. Hates it. It's fine. Dan may be right. On occasion, Dan's right. He may be right about this, but we will see. Now, that's round one. We're going to have plenty of time to be discussing uh, Dalton Kincaid when he's torturing the Kansas City Chiefs at some point in his career. But let's talk about what the Bills can do in rounds two and three. Um, there's, you know, this is typically what happens. There's only so many first round grades and then you take a break. You guys know you draft in fantasy football, man, after the top 10, you feel like there's nobody good in there. And then all of a sudden you start going, wait a minute, there's a lot of good players when it comes back around to me because you look at them differently. Now we're into the second round and I'm looking at some of the guys and, and I do want to talk about offensive line because I still think it's a need. And there's a couple of guys out there that I think they could look at. And one of them I keep going back to, and I almost put him in my mock draft. And I know some of you mocked my mock draft, but there's guys out there. Um, Matthew Bergeron of Syracuse. I think he's got a lot of traits that the Bills like. I think they believe he can play tackle in this league, but he can also play guard. I think he's the kind of athlete they want. I think he's more of an athlete than what they've put out there. I think he's the kind of guy that can be that swing guard tackle, could start for you at guard. I think he's the type of player they should be looking at. Syracuse has been not a great program, but they've actually put a decent amount of guys into the NFL. So keep an eye on Matthew Bergeron. Again, we don't know how quickly he's going to go. I think he'll go relatively high in round number two, we would see. There's another guy I just love, John Michael Schmitz. Uh, he's out of Minnesota, powerful interior guy, 6'4", 300. I believe he might have wrestled. I think I might have seen that. Plays mean. That's what I like. He's got that edge that they talk about. He's another guy that I like. Again, we'll see. When the Bills get to pick in round number two, we'll see who's out there. Um, I, I like Jonathan Mingo of, of Ole Miss. I, I, I think he's not now the type of player they would go for. Uh, he's been in, compared to Anquan Bolden. Again, type of player. I think he's a really good player. I think he can run after the catch. He's strong. He's bigger. But I think they're getting that more out of Kincaid. Um, two defensive players that are on my mock draft. I'm telling you, stop with the hate of Trenton Simpson because of the missed tackle rate. Read what the scouts said. They trade, changed the way they did the defense at South Carolina last year. He was in a different role. Go back and look at what he did in 2021. An explosive player who can get to the quarterback. Again, are they going to commit to a linebacker high in this draft? Are they going to admit that maybe Terrell Bernard is not the guy? Or are they going to give Bernard another opportunity to contribute in a different way? I don't know. He's a guy I like. I like Zach with two C's pickings on the inside at D-line. They're going to be replacing Ed Oliver at some point. I know nobody loves D-line picks because of how much time they've spent on it. But they need help on the defensive line. There's a player I love in this draft. Um and it's just funny. I think he could have gone relatively high in the first round, and he wasn't picked. Who knows? He could be a guy that slips, but it's Brian Branch, the safety out of Alabama, played that what they call the star position for Alabama. You know, size and weight. He's Micah Hyde. I compare everybody to Hyde. He can play that free safety spot. He can play nickel for you. He can cover. He's six foot one ninety. Do they sit there and find it? Do they care? They got to draft a safety at some point. I really think they do. And I love the guy as a player. You know, go get the Alabama guys. Wide receiver, if they're going to go for one. A couple of guys to look at. I like Tyler Scott out of Cincinnati. I think this guy is very talented. I think he gives them speed. I think he played in an offense that could highlight what he does. And we'll see how quickly more wide receivers pop. And if the Bills still think pass catcher, but he's a guy to keep in mind. And another guy I love, and I mentioned it on our uh, on our uh, live show the other day, um, if the Bills later in the draft, and maybe this is, you know, uh, fourth round, fifth round maybe, and maybe he goes earlier than that, is Michael Wilson out of Stanford. 
I think he's going to end up being a day three pick because he's had some injury issues, but I love the way he plays. Uh, Jim Nagy uh, does this great job with the uh, senior bowl. Loved him at the senior bowl, gets separation. He said he doesn't time well, but he said, Nagy said, this kid was beating four, three guys down the field at the senior bowl as a wide receiver. It's one of those guys that quote plays flat fast. So he's other guys to look at. Um, you know, again, they still have a lot of needs. And, and don't count Jair Brown of Penn State out. I mentioned him on the radio a couple of places uh, uh, leading up to the draft. You know, again, we'll see when safety start to go. And they have to look at the, the guy as what fits your team. But I think he's a playmaker. I think he's their kind of guy. Just depends on where opportunity meets value in terms of the draft. So uh, that's going to do it for me right now. Um, Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Again, do you trust Bean? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. But this guy can be a dynamic player for him if used properly. And I have to say this for Dan. Ken Dorsey, you got a different kind of weapon. Find a way to use him. That's what they're going to expect out of Dalton Kincaid. All right, that's going to do it for me. We'll have plenty of coverage coming up as the Bills get set for rounds two and three in the draft on Friday and then a big weekend. We'll see you next time on Buffalo Plus.